Welcome to How I Make Guitars, prompted by my friends who are always asking me, how did you do that? This video is really just for fun and I won't get too bogged down in details. So today, part one, is how to make the rim of the guitar. So let's just jump in. Start with hand-selected hardwood, rough cut. Uh, it's going to be sawn into very thin plates with a resaw. But first, I'm going to cut off the end to be used later on the neck. Now I have my resawn and sanded back and sides back in order as per the end marks. I've decided to make this guitar out of Bobinga. The back is book matched to create a mirror image effect. And the sides are book matched like this with the tail seam here. Now into the water with the pieces along with a couple other small pieces to be used for the cutoff and the access door. They'll soak for about three hours. And now for the fun part. We sandwich the wet wood between sheet metal with the heating pad underneath. Turn on the heat. And cook it for five minutes. I can see steam rising. I can hear it sizzling. So I know it's hot. And at the five minute mark, I'm going to put it in the form and bend it quickly before it cools off so it doesn't crack. Okay, here we go. controlled chaos, but it actually works. Okay, clamp it really tight. Let it cook for another five minutes, and then let it cool after that. While waiting for the side to cool, I'm going to bend the cutout again on a uh, heating pad here that gets very hot. We'll cook it till it starts sizzling for about five minutes. Now I've got my piece inside of a bending strap. I'm going to bend on the hot pad because the curvature is so extreme. Let it bend and not crack. And once it's bent, then we'll clamp it in. All right. Okay, it's time. There you have it. And finally, curve the little access door. And uh, I'll explain what that is later.
goes on the tail of the guitar. All right, these sides have cooled off and dried overnight. Let's see what happens. Aha, turns out Bobinga bends very well. No problem at all. Good. Okay. I noticed that all of these pieces are still rather damp, so I'm going to let them dry for a couple more days in the forms loosely clamped. Now I think the sides are dry, so we're going to trim the ends off. So you see I've doubled up on the thickness for the cutaway piece. It fits in the two slots in the bending form. And with a little fuss and trimming and trial and error, we get the pieces to all fit together. Just like so. But we're not ready for gluing yet. Still have to trim the width of the sides. Because the guitar top and back are curved, the sides must be sculpted, as you can see in this template, which I made using math. I use lots of math in designing my guitars. I think math is cool, but I promise not to inflict any on you, the listener. Let's trim the sides. I'll make the neck block this thick chunk of hardwood and the tail block, which is quarter sawn Engelmann spruce I harvested from the Colorado mountains. Both ends of the guitar have a 14 inch radius, which I'll put on the blocks using this jig. This groove here rides against a lip that I placed right in front of the sanding disc. So, I'm really hold it again. Now we have our cut sides in here with the spreaders. Everything's in place. Now it's time to glue it all together. Yes, the gluing is messy, and it's a good thing I put lots of paste wax on the form here to keep it from getting bonded to the gluing form. All right, glue's dry. Let's see what we got. A little trimming. And there you have it. A great start on a beautiful Bobinga guitar.